Welcome to Smart Solar Chases. You know, I've made a few mistakes myself when I started working with solar. That is why I started this channel, to help you avoid those same mistakes. If you are thinking of buying an innovator or investing in solar, this video is for you. Let us talk like friends, one-on-one, -on -one, and walk through the 10 plus 1 things you need to check before putting your hard-earned money into a solar inverter. The first thing you need to check is functionality. You see, not all inverters are created equal. Some just convert DC to AC, and that's it. But modern inverters, the really good ones, come with features that will help you manage your energy intelligently. For example, there's an important feature called auxiliary load output. Sounds technical, but here's what it means for you. Your inverter can be smart enough to separate important appliances from the rest. So when your battery is getting low, the inverter automatically switches off things like the pool pump or the geyser and keeps the fridge, lights or Wi-Fi running. You don't have to lift a finger, the system does it on its own. That's real value. Another important feature is energy optimization. This feature makes sure your solar power is used in the most efficient way possible. That helps you save money over time. So instead of buying just any inverter, check whether this feature is available in that inverter. If you don't get a good explanation, maybe it will be the best time to run away. The third important feature to look for is ease of use. Can you understand what's happening just by glancing at the screen or the app of your newly bought investment? A system that is easy to understand and easy to operate gives real value and peace of mind to its owner. So, these are the kinds of questions you need to ask. And please, don't just take the brochure at face value. Go online, watch the reviews, ask people who've used that model. The things that other people say there about that brand will save you a lot of headaches. The second valuable thing you need to check before you take your inverter home is the value for money. Let's be real. Everyone wants a good deal, especially here in Zimbabwe. But the value for money doesn't mean buying the cheapest thing. Sadly, it's often the ladies who fall into this trap, and I understood why. It is not because they are foolish, but because of a strength inherently in them. Our sisters, wives, and mothers are amazing when it comes to saving money. But with solar, it's not just about price. Sometimes getting a cheaper deal can cost you more later. In performance, durability, or peace of mind. If you are in the diaspora, be careful when relatives or friends back home choose a system for you. They might go for the cheapest cut, but not the best one. Look for value. Does the inventor offer reliability, comfort, longevity, and ease control? An inventor that will give you these will bring you real value for your money. The third aspect that I would need you to check before you buy an inverter from the shop is the battery compatibility. Many people buy lithium batteries thinking they will last forever, and they can if properly managed. But what I've seen too often is inverters that don't talk to the batteries. A good inverter must be able to communicate with major lithium batteries, at least some, like Pylon Tech, Linus, BYG, Freedom One, Day and others. This is done through what's called a battery management system or BMS. This communication allows the inverter to charge and protect the lithium battery cells correctly. So without BMS connection, your battery may get damaged and dies prematurely. Sadly, I have seen installers leave out this setup completely. So please ask your installer, is this battery fully compatible and communicating with my inverter? We'll go deeper into this in a future video. The fourth thing that you would, I would also want to look, you to look out for when you are buying an inverter is the protection rating, which is called the IP rating. Here in Africa, dust, moisture, and even heat are part of the daily life. The IP ratings range from IP20 to IP67. So the higher the rating, the higher the protection from dust and water. If you see something like IP65 on your, on your inverter or on an inverter, it's a good sign. It means the device is well protected from dust and can handle splashes of water. It will be ideal for outdoor or dust installation. But not all good inverters have a high IP rating though. For example, 
Victron has an IP22 rating and is a world class brand. The trick is to install it indoors in a clean environment. So the real takeaway is match the inverters in rating with your actual environment of installation. Number five, brand credibility and online presence. Here is something that I always ask. Can I find this brand online? To be honest with you, my friend, all serious brands take their online presence seriously. This means that good inventors should have a proper website. You should be able to see your model, check the specs, download manuals, or even access firmware updates. If you can't find anything online about your inventor, that's probably a red flag. Worse still, if you need space or support later, who are you going to call? Fly by night brands often disappear, leaving you stuck. So before you buy, take five minutes, only five minutes, and Google that brand. Check if it's a real deal. Another point you need to consider is after sales support. Let's say your inventor stops working. Who helps you? Good after sales support can save you hours of stress and potential loss of money. Make sure the brand is support channels locally or at least regionally. Can someone assist you without sending the whole inverter across the globe to China or to Europe? That is something worth knowing before you need help. Make smart choices. Price is not the only drive force in everything you decide. Number seven is the ease of installation. Now here's the practical point. How easy is it to install that inverter? Some inverters come with tricky configurations. They need to, to be put passwords, they need licenses, special softwares, or they are designed for grids in Europe and not Zimbabwe. I have had clients bring me inverters that wouldn't work without internet access, just imagine, or a permanent grid power. That's not helpful here at all. Look for systems that are flexible, easy to set up, and designed with environments like ours in mind. The eighth thing you need to consider is scalability and upgrade options. Today you might want to start small, but what if your needs grow? Scalability means your inverter can handle expansion. You should be able to add more solar panels, more batteries, or even another inverter in the future. But here is the catch. Many unknown brands disappear quickly. When you are ready to upgrade, they are gone, and you are forced to start all of again. So official proof of investment by choosing something that grows with you, right? Let's go on to number nine. Number nine is monitoring and interface. Don't you want to see what your system is doing? Maybe on real time. Monitoring features let you track solar production, battery level, and consumption right on your phone or on your computer. Some of the best brands offer user-friendly apps or online portals. It's empowering and it helps you make better energy decisions. Whether you are at home or you are away, it is a great tool to have that kind of control. So even if your inventor of choice has no online portal, at least make sure the intelligence is there. The interface is user-friendly and understandable. When anything goes south, you will be at a greater position to understand what's really happening. The last point, the 10 point, software updates and safety features. A smart inverter should receive firmware updates. That's how it stays current and supports newer batteries or improves performance. Also, ask about the safety features. For example, features like anti-islanding protects utility workers during power outages in that they do not accidentally fit back into the grid by accident. Overload protection keeps your inverter from burning when someone plugs in some heavy. And lastly, over or under voltage protection helps you deal with the utilities unpredictable power supply. These features, my friend, aren't luxuries anymore. They are necessities. Make sure you find out of those or hire an expert to look that out for you. The last point is a bonus. It is noise level. Let me ask you, 
If you ever been around a noisy invader before, some of them make a loud hum or the fans run constantly, especially cheap models. That might not seem like a big deal until it's sitting in your lounge or your office, humming away while you're on a call. Good brands often run quietly or only cool themselves when it's needed. It's a small detail, but it makes a big difference in comfort. So my friend, these are the 10 plus one key things you want to check before buying your inverter. Don't just buy based on price or what's trending. Ask the right questions and invest in something that's going to save you well. Not just today, but for years to come. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, and share it with someone who is considering going solar. You can also share your experiences with me in the comment section. I would love to hear your experiences and I would reply. Don't forget to subscribe to Smart Solar Choices. And of course, if you ever need expert help, you know where to find me. My team at Take On Electrical is always here to help. Oh, and by the way, in our next video, we will talk about the top 5 innovators in the Zimbabwe market. I will break down the pros and cons so you can see which one fits your needs best. You don't want to miss it. Until next time, stay smart, stay informed, and stay powered. Bye.